Oh, huh? What? Yeah, can I help you? You want to make a D&D character for a modern setting? And you just need help with some ideas? Well, yeah, dude. I mean, nowadays you can just look up anything on the internet. Here, I'll pull up a YouTube video. Should be all you need. Hello, Acolytes! Welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons & Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. So you're planning to play a D&D game in a modern setting. You want to theorize on what that might look like if you take fantasy and put it into today's age. You may have seen the Dimension 20 D&D live show called Unsleeping City, and you are hungry to try something like it out. You may be a DM looking for NPC or setting inspiration, or a player that's trying to get their perfect character. Lucky for you, I've compiled 100 different concepts taking inspiration from modern occupations and jobs. Shout out to my subscribers who helped me out with a modern character creation in a community post that I put out. Your comments actually helped inspire this video and incredible ideas for sure. So if you see your idea, leave a comment below. And if you want to see my modern pigeon skateboarder rogue in action, you can check out my live play with Hidden Nerdy Side. It should be on VOD at this point, but if it's not, I'll just link it in the description when it does. So without further ado, let's start with the Artificer. A very easy one to translate into the modern age, in my opinion. With technology and engineering, you can look at jobs like robotics and computer engineers. Perhaps you're the one who made a breakthrough in modern technology and created a advanced AI. You could also be a gunsmith artillerist or an armor that uses Kevlar's armor instead of plate mail. Another popular idea was the battlesmith that had its own sentient motorcycle. But these artificers also fit well with inventive hobbies like glass blowing, jeweling, and chefs. But whatever your artistic invention is you're imbuing that thing with magic. You could be 3D printing your magical items for your party, much like the designated D&D mini guy at your table. Or you can flip it on its head and be a homeless person where you go dumpster diving for these magical artifacts. Or you're just very resourceful and use a lot of junk in a very creative way. Next we have the barbarian. And now in the modern age, we might not see as much of the animalistic rage as we once saw because hey, now we have therapy, but knowing we still have some that don't do that, it's still open for possibilities. And honestly, the first thing I think of as modern rage is anything in customer service. A lot of pent up rage with working with people all day can be pretty explosive sometimes. I'm not speaking from my own experience, no. What are you talking about? You could be a food vendor and the person who asks you for a hot dog even though you're a taco stand could be the last straw. I also picture an angry neighbor yelling at the kids or a Karen that wants to ask for the manager or just so happens to show up at every court public meeting. Or they could be the ones picketing outside the courthouse over a law that they don't want to happen. But if you just want to focus on the brute strength of the barbarian, you can look at bouncers, bodybuilders, or people who fight in the WWE. You can also have heavy athletes like football, rugby, or hockey players, or someone from a fraternity where you really just don't need a reason to tackle somebody. And one other fun one that I think that would be really cool are just implementing trade jobs. I just like the idea of a plumber barbarian that attacks with a plunger, or an electrician that's like a zealot barbarian that's been shocked one too many times. Now, Bard might be one of the easiest to reflavor into a modern setting, just because there's so much art, speech, and information that's readily accessible worldwide. So let's start with the arts. You could be looking at a DJ, a street performer, or a graffiti artist. And obviously pop stars, boy bands, or the queen, Dua Lipa, inspiring others with your artistic voice with all levels of influence. Other forms of art might be stop motion, acting, or fashion design. You could either be the one creating the clothing line or be the next America's top model. But another form of artistic content that a lot of commenters made sure to make me aware of is YouTube, a world full of influencer bards that might be streaming the fight that you happen to be in. You could have a fitness channel, cooking channel, ASMR, be a vlogger, or a conspiracy theorist who adores their 25 followers. Don't worry, bud. We've all been there. Modern bards also do very well in sales, are great at telemarketing, but they are also great information sharers, be it a radio host, a news anchor, or a journalist. One of those news that's actually relevant to the time of this video, you could be a bard lawyer that's helping in the Depp v. Heard trial. And now for clerics. In a world where science has largely replaced a religion for a lot of people, where would they fit? Of course, you could still be a youth pastor or a preacher for Bahumat, the platinum dragon, but you don't necessarily need to believe in a 
religion to believe in the afterlife. You could be a ghost hunter or a medium and even maybe get a little cash when you talk to people's ancestors who have passed on. Clerics could also be considered many different healers in other capacities like doctors, nurses, or those in hospice care. But you also have your pharmacists, which arguably would make a really good artificer too, and therapists. You could be in the party trying to get one-on-one -on -one time with the barbarian to just get them to open up. But then maybe in the end, you realize that you were the one broken all along. Or perhaps you're a lifeguard who's CPR certified and always has a first aid kit on hand. And you know who else could be a healer? This was actually one of my favorite suggestions, a mother or a father, perhaps along for the ride to straighten your tie or provide you with Tupperwares full of food. But now moving along to druids, our relationship with nature now could be considered a lot different than a medieval fantasy setting. But there are still very much advocates of nature, so you could be a conservationalist or a recycler. Conservationalist? Conservationist? Did I say that right? But doing all you can to reduce plastics in the ocean and reduce global warming. On the other hand, you could be doing solar sails and doing live demonstrations with your daylight spells. You could also be doing your part as a hardworking farmer with your farm either being full of veggies or cattle. Other related occupations might be a biologist or a virologist. Imagine wild shaping into like a microorganism. You could be working with more animals as a veterinarian or more plants as a florist. I could also see a bunch of druids just being landscapers with no need for extra tools. Or see them on the news channel as they update the weather live. And after the weather, they turn over to a story about a bunch of druid firefighters that saved an apartment complex. But now if druids are from the city, what if the city is now part of nature? Instead of dirt, you have concrete, and instead of trees, you have skyscrapers. Your druid could be a homeless person living in the sewers that know the underbelly of the city like the back of their hand. Or a city planner who's trying their best to make their city organic or put up more parks. I actually have a Circle of the City homebrew subclass on my website, so if you wanna check that out, that's in the link below in the description. But next we have our beloved fighters, and moving from a time where we might have fought for necessity, Nowadays, it's more for sport. I'm looking at things like fencing, boxing, or mixed martial arts. Or you could be an athletic trainer who trained these athletes to be in their peak physical shape. You could also reflavor some sporting activities like a baseball fighter who fights with a bat or a golfer that puts down a tee every time they wanna make a ranged attack. Fighters are also an excuse to get creative with your weapon choices. You could be a mechanic with a giant wrench as a club or a dominatrix with a whip. Fighters nowadays might get inspiration from the comics that they read as well, finally emerging from their basement with a mask and a costume. I also imagine the scenes from the TV show Hawkeye when he encounters all of those LARPers. I also mentioned this on my Better Class videos on the fighter, and I have to because there's a lot of us modern people who really wish we were in a medieval setting. I also think it would be really fun to have a cavalier fighter on a motorcycle, scooter, or Segway as a modern mount, or a police officer on a horse if they still do that. Do they still do that? Monks! There is actually a lot of inspiration that we can get for modern monks, as monks in general really haven't changed a lot over time. We even have arguably a lot of Western influences in American karate classes, or we can be an actor monk like Jackie Chan, but what if we reflavor the flexibility and perfected bodies in other ways? Another huge popular idea that was submitted was a parkour monk being able to jump across buildings and walk up walls that Really, you know, not a lot of people can do. Other ideas, including dancers of all sorts, ballet, jazz, pole dancing, or even ballroom, if you can get a party member to dance with you. You lead, of course. Your flexible form of fighting could be you being a gymnast, or you have a girlfriend that goes to yoga every week. If we lean on the purity of mind, we can look at spa workers or masseuses. Them along with people who do physical therapy and acupuncture could have a lot of insight on the pressure points of the body. But speaking of the body, one form of bodily perfection could come from nutritionists or dietitians, or be a vegan monk and make sure to remind everyone about it after every encounter. Following that, we have our righteous warriors, the paladin. And just like we had certain oaths back then, we'd have different oaths now. A president or government leader could be sworn in, promising to do their best to serve their country. Get impeached and you might become an oath breaker. An oath of crown paladin might be the menagerie of politicians or staff, and military personnel similarly makes oaths and promises to serve and to protect, both on land, air, and sea, 
thank you for your service. But in the same boat, recruiters of the military and otherwise have kind of a paladin-esque mentality. Other dispatchers like paramedics and ambulances, firefighters and police officers all promise to help their citizens, either to heal them or to smite the lawbreakers. And you could be a correctional officer, being in the party just to follow around the rogue to make sure that they don't do anything stupid. I also think it would be kind of funny to have a paladin of human resources, you know, to keep the office ship shape and their power has obviously gone to their heads. Or you could be in charge of AA meetings, helping bring others to redemption that you found. Or a devotion paladin that creates fundraisers and sends gift packages to countries across the sea. And why not make the Oath of Ancients the astronauts of this world, committed to see what's beyond the stars and protect us from whatever's behind it. And next we have another nature focused class with the Ranger. However, their modern implications are a little bit different, but knowing they have favored foes and favored terrain, we would know that they would know a lot about different creatures and nature. So of course the obvious, park rangers from different national parks. They would also make great professors, possibly teaching Dragonology 101. Or you could be a 14 year old boy scout or camp counselor who just get their not tying merit badge. I think it would be also interesting to be an archeologist or paleontologist who has a goal to dig up the elusive beholder who rumored to go extinct about a couple thousand years ago. Your ranger could come from the zoo as a zookeeper or the pound taking care of animals there or just a literal pet owner. I have no regrets submitting the old cat lady idea here again. In any of these cases though, you could be a breeder providing others with purebred poodle puppies. Other animal related jobs could be you into pest control or an actual hunter with camo and bright orange hats. But another thing rangers are great at is navigation and travel. So they would really know the terrain really well. You could be a tourist in a double decker bus or other touristy areas in the city. You could be a train conductor or a taxi driver that always knows the fastest way to the destination destination, or you could be a mail carrier like UPS or FedEx for a similar reason. And one thing that you could be hunting down instead of animals in a modern world could be good houses in the real estate market. Now, rogues are self-explanatory as they're often perceived as criminals and lawbreakers. And of course, those are very relevant across any setting. But if you do go the criminal route, be creative with it. You could be a scammer or a hacker that gets your information and steals your credit card. Or perhaps you're just really good at dining and dashing or you set up a catfish profile on a dating website and you're really nervous about meeting this person who only knows you as the hunky surfer named Ben. But rogues are also archetypically very greedy with their money. So you could be a tax collector or anyone working in corporate insurance, or you could be an accountant who's taken opportunity to just fiddle with things in the yearly report and pocket some change and never pay taxes. To take it another route, we can bring up the comic book thing and you become sort of a vigilante, or you could be an undercover cop that's really good at sneaking around and really good at disguises. Rogues are also really good at breaking into places, so maybe you're a locksmith, or you own your own security system company and you know the ins and outs of it because of that. If we focus on the rogue sneak attack, some interesting occupations might be the mortician that knows exactly where to hurt the body most, or an anesthesiologist that pricks you with a needle and puts you to sleep. But moving on to the sorcerer, magical bloodlines still exist. So this is actually a great way to bring back some of the ancient or medieval elements back into your modern campaign setting. You could be a historian or someone just really into family history or genealogy. I could also see a family focused sorcerer being part of the mafia, who's also talking about family loyalty and blood. Sorcerers might also be considered privileged individuals who are born into magic or money, or or you could just be an average Joe working a nine to five desk job and you know that you are meant for more than this. Because one thing that sorcerers are, they're prodigies gifted individuals that seem to be great at everything. Valedictorians, super geniuses that graduate college at age 12, or the one kid on YouTube that makes more in a month than you've had your entire adult life. Sorry, that was a little dark. But I also think that sorcerers would make great entrepreneurs, wanting to create something out of the power from within themselves and be their own boss. Or a gamer whose imagination manifests magically. But there are also sorcerers who get their magic not from blood. Maybe they induce wild magic from taking a bunch of drugs. Or they take magic for themselves by imbuing themselves with it through implants or prosthetics. But speaking of getting magic in a very unorthodox way, next we have the warlock. What does your modern patrons look like? 
And I would remiss not to mention the YouTube thing again. Of course, the YouTuber getting their magic from their Patreon. That was also a popular submission. You guys are hilarious. But I might as well take the opportunity to mention that if you do like my content and wish to support me through it, as well as gain access to other perks and content, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Because hey, if it's true, I'm just trying to get more spell slots in order to make all of this more magical for you guys. But speaking of subscriptions in general, it would be interesting to think about what other subscriptions might make a warlock. And I just picture a warlock of Netflix or Hulu. Perhaps in a modern world, there is actually subscriptions for magical abilities. Devils and hags that are jumping on the opportunity of capitalism and making terms and conditions that are suspiciously long. But these could also take on the form of pyramid schemes, which I did mention in my Better Classes Warlock video. The person at the top seems to have all the spell slots and you never have more than two. Or it could be a gang that you joined, your patron being the gang and getting your magic through initiation. Also, when you think of Warlock, you could think of what kind of modern vices are there as well. Maybe an addiction to gambling, the lottery, or crypto. But now we land on wizards, intellectual masters of the arcane. Instead of tall wizard towers, they now sit atop the tallest parts of skyscrapers. Instead of a wizard spell book, they have a spell phone and a cantroputer. Ig ignore that last one. That one, that one was bad. But in a world of freely accessible information, they can literally just look up spells. And downloading really large arcane files really racks up that telephone bill. But it's funny, we actually have a term nowadays that means a very proficient internet user, and that's a computer wizard. And being a wizard really just means someone that is really good at their field. So take that literally, perhaps with all of the occupations that we talked about, the people at the top, eventually just became full-blown wizard spellcasters. But being the intellectual class that they are, they also make great professors and arcane students. Instead of paying for spell books, they're paying for college books, which in America are just disgraceful. I don't know about other countries. Maybe you have it better. But because there are so many different schools of magic, there opens up a lot of useful things. An enchantment wizard could be working at the psych ward or an illusionist be working in movie special effects. Scribes wizard would make great animators or coders and transmutation wizards would make great architects. I also think that it would make sense that in a modern age, we would equate magic and science to be either the same thing or very similar. Our wizards could be our science scientists or physicists helping us understand the world more bit by bit. Perhaps there are even more spells now because of the leaps that we've made in technology. Now, Wizards of the Coast actually came out with an unearthed arcana with modern spells and subclasses in 2015. So just for some extra inspiration, I'll include that linked in the description as well. And just for an added note, it might be interesting to play with spell components being a speech pathologist for verbal components or no sign language for somatic components. Or, you know, just be a stage magician that works in Las Vegas. That works too. But an extra thing that I will add here too is an extra tip when thinking about how magic interacts with your modern setting. Is magic fully flushed out in this world like we've talked about before? Or is this magical world hidden from the modern world like worlds like Harry Potter? Percy Jackson, or Wizards of Waverly Place. Either way, I hope that all of these ideas have inspired you. And if you have other ideas that I haven't covered, please add them to the comments below. If you want further inspiration for specific settings, check out this video here, or flavorful ideas for classes, this playlist here. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off your tables. See you in the next one.